We've been talking a lot about dust collection and filters lately, and we're not done yet. By the time we're finished, our new dust collection section at shopdustcollection.com will be full of great information and resources to keep your shop cleaner and safer. But today, I'm going to show you how to tell when your filters need cleaning. So let's get started. So you've upgraded your dust collection filters, and now you have all kinds of airflow. Everything is running at peak performance, and the air in your shop has never been cleaner. Time to sit back and enjoy it for a while. But eventually, those filters will start to plug up, and as they do, they become restricted. The airflow through the system is reduced, and suddenly, your dust collection isn't collecting as much dust. Now, it's easy to say, when that happens, I'll know it's time to clean the filters, but it's not that simple. Since the filters accumulate dust slowly, the changes are subtle. It's like the story about the frog in a pot of water. You boil him slowly and he won't even notice until he's dead. While dust collection may not be as dramatic or cruel, but you still need a way to keep an eye on your filter condition so everything is running at peak efficiency. The answer is a manometer, a simple water gauge that measures pressure. These work on just about any type of dust collector from a single stage unit to a big cyclone, even ambient air filtration units. If you upgraded them to a canister filter like I showed you in a previous video, you can check that out at shopdustcollection.com too. And the best part is you can make one of these manometers yourself. All you need is a piece of plywood, about four inches wide and 10 inches long. You need three to six feet of three eighths inch ID clear tubing and some type of big rubber grommet. These ones that I'm using are made for sink garbage disposals, and you can get them at most home centers. Now comes your first big decision. Where do you want to cut a hole in your filter? We'll talk about ambient filters later, but for now let's concentrate on dust collectors. If you have a single stage collector like a Harbor Freight or a Jet or a Grizzly or a Delta or something like that, you'll want to cut your hole right in the top of the metal filter. Now this is assuming you have one of those canister filters on your collector. If you have one of the big filter bags, I suggest you stop and go over to shopdustcollection.com to watch our video about why you shouldn't be using a bag filter. Now if you have a cyclone, you'll want the hole in the bottom of your filter stack. A lot of cyclones have wooden cleanout boxes down there. That's a perfect place to cut a hole to attach your meter. On mine, I replaced the wooden cleanout box with a removable filter pan from Wind Environmental which attaches to the bottom of the main filter with some clips. This sucker gives me even more filter area, which makes my sun clone run even better. Anyway, that means I'm going to cut my hole right in the filter pan. By now, you're probably wondering, why are we cutting holes to begin with? Well, we have to attach one end of our tubing to our filter somehow. So we'll trace around the outside of the rubber grommet and use whatever tool we have on hand to cut it out. Remember, you're doing this on the top of your filter with a single stage collector and on the side of your wooden cleanout box if you have one of those on the bottom of your cyclone filter. I actually tried mounting it above the filter on my cyclone in that elbow area and it just didn't work out for all sorts of complex scientific reasons. Anyway, after you get your big hole cut, you're going to drill a half inch hole through the center of your rubber grommet to fit your tubing. These things don't drill well, so take her easy. You want a snug fit, not a torn up mess. You'll probably have to cut at least uh, the last little bit of it out by hand. Now use some good goopy adhesive to attach your grommet to the hole in your filter or your cleanout box if you ever went that way. Time to make the meter itself. Get out your chunk of plywood and lay your tubing along one edge. Mark a point on each side of the tube. We're going to drill holes at these points to attach some zip ties around the tubing to secure it to the wood. So mark three pairs of holes on either side of the tube, down one side, and keep them about an inch and a half away from the bottom end of the plywood so that there's room for your hose to bend in a nice U-shape without kinking. And then mark holes and other three sets right up the other side. An eighth of an inch drill bit should be just perfect to drill all those points out. After you finish boring your holes, measure about four inches from the bottom end and mark that point with a pencil. From there, Mark off every 1 8 inch up for about 6 inches or so. Use a square to draw a line across your board at each of those points 
so you have a nice even scale. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you know, try. Now get yourself some plastic zip ties, or some wire would work too, and use them to attach your tubing to the board. You'll want one end to start at the upper right corner, and then run down the edge, make a nice U-turn at the bottom, and then run up the other edge. You should have lots of extra tubing when you get to that top left corner. Fight the urge to trim it for now. That'd be a mistake. Now, where are you going to mount your meter? I mounted mine on the wall right next to my filter at eye level. Just make sure wherever you mount it is close enough to the filter that you can slip that long end of the tubing into the rubber grommet without kinking. That's why I said you needed three to six feet of tubing. It all depends on where you mount your meter. Speaking of meters, if you've plugged the tube into your grommet, you're almost finished. Time to calibrate. Get yourself some nice liquid like scotch or water, or scotch and water. If you're a teetotaler, you can use water with some food coloring so that you can see it a little better. Carefully fill your tube until the level reaches the first line. Don't go over, because if you do, you have to go through a complicated recalibration process that includes sliding the tube down. In fact, any time your water level changes due to evaporation or refilling, you can just adjust it by sliding the tube up or down within the ties so that you always start with your water level at that bottom line. That's the zero point. Now turn on your system. We're only concerned with the right hand side of this new meter, where the water level rises when you turn the dust collector on. If your filters are new or recently cleaned, you'll see the water rise just a little bit, maybe one or two lines. Of course, it's all relative to the size of your blower and the size of your filters, but it shouldn't rise that much. It's a good idea to make a mark on your gauge at that point so you know where your level should be when your filter is clean. Now you need something to compare it to. So get some big trash bags and some duct tape. You want to cover up as much of your filter as you can. A perfect seal is going to be impossible, but use lots of duct tape and do your best. Now, either unhook your dust collector from the ductwork, or if that's not convenient, open up all your blast gates. You want maximum airflow coming into the system. Of course, since we covered the filters, we should have minimal airflow coming out of the system, which builds up pressure inside the filters. Don't worry, the shop is fairly unlikely to explode. So turn the system on and watch what happens. On my cyclone, my meter shot up several inches right away. That represents a really, 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 really plugged filter. Way more plugs than you're ever going to let it get. If I had completely mummified that thing so that it was sealed up perfectly, it probably would have shot water right out of the top of the hose because it's a powerful cyclone. A single stage collector is not going to move the water nearly as much. Wherever your level is with your filter all wrapped up and your system on, mark it on the meter. We'll consider that maximum pressure. So we have our zero, we have our new or clean filter level, and we have our max level. Where in there should you clean out your filters? I'd suggest cleaning it at about 25% of that maximum level. On my cyclone, that's about an inch and a half above zero. On a smaller system, it'll be lower. Just make your mark on your meter about a quarter of the way from zero to your max line. When your water level reaches that point, you know it's time to clean your filters. Don't forget to take the trash bags off before you use it again. So, what if you want to mount a manometer to one of those ambient air filtration units we modified in our last video to accept a canister filter. Well, if you remember, we attached a disc to the top of our filter so we could hook up our duct to it. I made mine out of plastic. You might have used plywood. Get yourself a nylon hose barb of some kind. Drill a hole right in that disc and glue the hose barb into it. If you didn't duct your filter and instead you attached it right to the system, you'll want to put your hose barb on the bottom of the filter instead of on the disc, which you won't have. Now, attach your manometer to, and follow the same process as before to make your guide marks. Zero, new filter, max, and then about 25% for cleaning. Remember, these units generate far less pressure than a dust collector, so your water level changes will be more subtle. But if you do the same wrap test to find your max level, you can then mark 25% of that as your cleanout point and you'll be golden. So there you have the homemade manometer. Sure beats buying one. And you'll always know that your system is running at peak performance. Check out shopdustcollection.com for more dust collection resources, and we'll see you next time at the Stumpy Nubs Workshop.